The next topic is about genetic information in microbes. So the genetic material of bacteria and plasmids is DNA. So what is a plasmid? A plasmid is a small extra chromosomal DNA molecule within a cell separated from chromosomal DNA and can replicate independently. So we have here bacterial viruses known as bacteriophages or phages. They have DNA or RNA as their genetic material. There are two essential functions of the genetic material, which is replication and expression. In replication, it means we have the exact copy of a certain genetic material in which it, uh, we call it as genotypes or the genetic composition. And we have for expression, it is all about the phenotype or the physical expression of the genes. So bacteria replicate through binary fission. So binary fission, in binary fission, it makes clones. Clones means uh, they are genetically identical copies. Meaning unlike uh, sa atin, sa humans, we have uh, genetic diversity. Sa binary fission, walang gen uh, genetic diversity dahil exact copy lang yung nagagawa sa binary fission. So, prokaryotes can share genes by mechanisms. So, the mechanisms of sharing genes in bacteria, we have three mechanisms. First, transformation, conjugation, and transduction. So, yun yung tatlong mechanism nila. But let us first discuss transposition. So, what is transposition? In transposition, a certain bacterium has a bacterial DNA. So, this bacterial DNA, ito yun. So, these are the chromosome. So, in transposition, the moving part of bacterial DNA from chromosomes, it becomes plasmids. So, plasmids can only be shared to another bacterium and not the entire chromosomal DNA. So, plasmids are part of uh, the DNA strand. So, plasmids are often in circular form or circular shape. So, that is transposition. From the chromosomes, yung bacterial DNA na nakakoil lang into plasmids. Next, doon tayo sa mechanisms of sharing genes ng bacteria. We have the first one which is conjugation. Ano yung mga important parts natin sa process ng conjugation? First is the plasmid and the second is the pilus. So what happens in conjugation? So we have here the DNA in the form of plasmids. It is transferred from one bacterium to another. We have here what we call the donor cell or the donor bacterium. So, itong donor bacterium natin, meron siyang plasmid. And then, ano yung gagawin niya? So, with the help of the pilus, it pulls itself close to the recipient bacterium. Ayan, ito yung recipient natin na cell or recipient na bacterium. So, ang gagawin ng pilus, mag a siya dito sa ating recipient bacterium. And then, what will happen is through the pilus, doon dadaan yung ating plasmid. So, single strand plasmid will pass through the pilus and go to the recipient bacterium. So, itong plasmid natin, yung single strand niya is pupunta dito sa kabila. Okay, in order to, uh, in order para magkaroon din yung isang bacterium. So, magkakaroon din siya dito ng plasmid. And then, magkakaroon na rin siya ng pilus. Okay, so, it creates a pilus and can then be a new donor. So, itong recipient natin, kapag uh, in conjugation, parang hinahawahan niya yung kabila na bacterium. Okay, so that is conjugation. 
Next is transformation. In transformation, a bacterium takes in the DNA. So, ano, ma, ano yung important dito naman? Ang important dito is the plasmid. And, of course, the DNA, kung saan ang galing yung DNA na yon o yung plasmid. So, it may come from the laboratory or it may come from another bacterium. So, we have here, for example, a bacterium which has a chromosomal DNA but has no plasmid. Yung plasmid, it, uh, pwede siyang manggaling sa laboratory, ginawa ng mga scientists, O yung plasmid na yun, pwedeng manggaling sa another bacterium o sa ibang bacteria. So, kapag ang pumasok sa kanya is a plasmid in circular form, it can be copied in the receiving cell and passed on the descendant. So, ito yung mangyayari. Pumasok yung plasmid and then kapag siya ay nag-replicate, so ganito na yung magiging itsura niya kapag nag-replicate na yung bacterium na nagkaroon ng plasmid from the environment. Pero kapag uh, yung DNA, ang pumasok naman sa bacterium ay linear DNA fragment, hindi siya circular, hindi siya plasmid, kundi linear DNA fragment, it may cause homologous recombination. So, kung maaalala nyo, yung homologous chromosomes, yung pairing of genes natin, na nagkakaroon tayo ng process of synapsis sa crossover. So, ganun nung, yung nangyayari sa transformation. Kapag linear fragment yung pumasok doon sa bacterium, may incorporate yung linear fragment na yun doon sa chromosomal DNA. So, kung violet to, magkakaroon siya, siya ng color blue na linear na fragment. So, magkahalo siya. For example, toxin yung gene na pumasok sa kanya. Yung linear DNA fragment is toxic. And then, magre-recombine siya dito sa ating chromosomal DNA. So, mangyayari, magkakaroon din siya ng toxin. Magiging pathogenic yung ating bacteria. Imbes na hindi siya pathogenic dahil napasukan siya, ng isang toxin na gene, naging recombinant siya or nag-combine siya doon sa ating chromosome, sa chromosomal DNA. Magta-transform yung bacterium natin into a pathogen. Ayan. So, bacteria causing disease. Next is we have here, transduction. So, in transduction, it has something to do with the viruses that affects bacteria such as bacteriophage. So, we have there nakalagay yung uh, lytic and lysogenic phage. So, mamaya didiscuss ko kung anong kaibahan ng lytic and lysogenic phage. In transduction, we have here, uh, the example is bacteriophage. So, bacteriophages, ganito yung structure ng bacteriophage. Meron siyang capsid or yung head niya. It is icosahedral. So, it has 20 faces. Ayan. And inside the capsid, we have there the nucleic acid. It may be a DNA or it also be an RNA. So, we have there the collar. Ito yung collar niya. The sheet or the tube kung saan dumadaan yung DNA palabas. We have the base plate, spikes. Yung spikes yung tumutusok kapag uh, sa host. And then we have here the tail fiber. So, ano bang nangyayari sa transduction? Kapag itong si bacteriophage ay kumapit sa isang bacterium, ito yung ating bacterium, so, yung spikes niya tutusok dito sa membrane ng bacterium. Pag nakatusok na yung spikes niya, yung viral DNA niya will pass through the sheet at i-release niya yon sa loob ng ating bacterium. So, we have the, here already the bacterial DNA fragments and meron na ding viral DNA copies. So, anong mangyayari doon? Doon sa loob 
magre-reproduce ang bacteriophage. So, dadami ng dadami yung bacteriophage sa loob ng bacterium. And then, anong mangyayari? Dalawa yung pwedeng mangyari. Dahil ang bacteriophage ay nag-release ng enzyme na tinatawag na endolysin. Yung endolysin kapag sobrang toxic nun, kapag hindi siya kinaya ng isang bacterium, the bacterium will die. And it is called as lytic phage. Kapag namatay ang bacterium dahil hindi niya kinaya or yung pressure ng endolysin na sinikrit ni bacteriophage, that is what we call as lytic phage. Pero kapag uh, nakasurvive yung bacterium natin at nagpo-produce pa siya ng mga bacteriophage, ang tawag doon is lysogenic phage. Again, lytic phage is when the bacterium dies because of the pressure of the endolysin secreted by the bacteriophage. Pag naman lysogenic phage, it is when the bacterium survives but then produces Uh, many bacteriophage. Okay? So, that is a uh, transduction. It's whether the bacterium will die or survive, but then create a uh, pathogenic uh, will create pathogens. Okay? Next. So, we have here another one, which is most likely the problem today coronavirus so just like the bacteriophage it's a, vir a viral microbe so we have the human cor coronavirus types so coronaviruses are named for the crown like spikes on their surface kaya sa tinawag na coronavirus because it has spikes So, there are four main subgroupings of coronaviruses known as the alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. So, paano sa tinawag na alpha, beta, gamma, and delta? Kung saan yung uh, it is categorized based on their host. Ayan. Okay, so in alpha coronavirus, we all know that viruses cannot live without host. In alpha coronavirus, saan ba siya mas nag-thrive? So, ang nangyayari, it occurs in pigs. So, it causes gastroenteritis virus of the pigs. Feline infectious peritonitis virus. Peritonitis is the peritonium, swelling of peritonium. Peritonium, ano naman yon? Lining yon sa ating intestines. So, in the abdom abdominal tract. Okay, that is infectious peritonitis. And of course, this one, bat coronaviruses. The next one is beta coronavirus. So, it occurs in ayan, rats. So, we have the mouse hepatitis virus. Next one is the bovine coronavirus. It's a diarrhea-causing virus of cattle. And of course, we have here SARS-CoV. So, it is the severe acute respiratory syndrome associated with, of course, the coronavirus. So, we have now SARS-CoV-2 or the NCOV or novel coronavirus. So, it belongs to beta coronavirus. Next is gamma coronavirus. So, it occurs mostly as avian coronaviruses. So, this avian infectious bronchitis virus or the AIBV. So, it is a respiratory and reproductive tract disease in chickens. And the delta coronavirus, it's also an avian coronaviruses. It is found in several species of songbirds. Okay, next is I have here a video of the parts of coronavirus. Ah, oh, wait. So, before yung video we have here, ah, saan ba talaga uh, nanggaling? So, anong nangyari? Bakit nagkaroon tayo nitong COVID-19 or the SARS-CoV-2? So, pinaniniwalaan that the natural host of this 
SARS-CoV-2 is the sars bat cov So, kanina, di ba, nabanggit ko siya doon sa alpha coronavirus that bats have uh, that kind of coronavirus. And then, what happens is when this uh, wild animals eat bats or feed on bats and this domestic animals feed also on bats so nag, uh, they are possible possible immediate host so kanina nandun din sa alpha coronavirus yung sa feline infectious peritonitis sa mga cats sa pigs sa cattle and even uh, sa dogs kapag naman sa wild animals we have their rats, snakes, turtles, ayan. So, nagmumutate yung virus. So, it's either a beta coronavirus or gamma coronavirus. And then, kapag humans feed on those animals, uh, coronaviruses are being transmitted. The transmission is through droplets. So, uh, water droplets and aerial droplets. Okay, so nagkakaroon tayo. Nagkaroon yung humans and then human transmission na yung nangyari sa COVID-19 and COV or the SARS-CoV-2. Actually, yung SARS nag-start siya then noon sa China way back 2002. SARS pa lang yung tawag doon. Uh, but then it is uh, detected in PCR or the polymerase chain reaction. Yung PCR na yun na detect na it is associated with the coronavirus. So, tinawag na siyang SARS-CoV. And then, nagbago yung strain niya. Nagmutate siya. So, naka-adapt siya. Naging resistant siya. Antibiotic resistant and anti uh, viral resist antiviral resistant so nagmutate siya nagkaroon ng strain na SARS-CoV-2 okay so ito na yung video coronaviruses are a large family of viruses some of which infect humans the coronavirus at the root of COVID-19 is the newest known member of this family. And like other coronaviruses that infect people, the new coronavirus causes respiratory disease, among other symptoms. At their core, coronaviruses contain a genetic blueprint called RNA, similar to DNA. The single-stranded RNA acts as a molecular message that enables production of proteins needed for other elements of the virus. Bound to this string of RNA are nuclear proteins, proteins that help give the virus its structure and enable it to replicate. Encapsulating the RNA genome is the viral envelope, which protects the virus when it is outside of a host cell. This outer envelope is made from a layer of lipids, a waxy barrier containing fat molecules. As well as protecting the precious genetic cargo, this layer anchors the different structural proteins needed by the virus to infect cells. Envelope proteins embedded in this layer aid the assembly of new virus particles once it has infected a cell. The bulbous projections seen on the outside of the coronavirus are spike proteins. This fringe of proteins gives the virus its crown or halo-like appearance under the microscope from which the Latin name corona is derived. The spike proteins act as grappling hooks that allow the virus to latch onto host cells and crack them open for infection like all viruses, coronaviruses are unable to thrive and reproduce outside of a living host. Okay, yun. So, nakita nyo yung parts ng coronavirus. So, we have there number one. So, ano nangyayari when the host acquired the coronavirus? So, first, nabanggit kanina yung spikes protein or the spike protein. So, alam naman natin that our cell 
membrane, plasma membrane is semi-permeable, so it permits what enters and what exits the cell. So, di ba, ang pinapapasok lang niya is what is good sa kanya. Kaya lang ang nangyari dito, since uh, meron siyang part which is the spike protein, uh, nababasa siya ng plasma membrane as a protein na kailangan ng katawan. So, ang nangyayari, pagkapit ng spike protein sa receptors, nagkakaroon siya ng permission to enter the uh, enter the cell. So, we have the step 1 with, which is adsorption. So, the virus attaches to its host cell by specific binding of its spikes to the cell receptors. So, our cell receptors in the plasma membrane accepts the spikes protein. Okay? Next is number 2 which is the penetration. So, the virus is engulfed into a vesicle and its envelope is number 3, uncoated. Okay, so pag nakapasok na siya, nag a uh, si coronavirus, thereby freeing the viral RNA into the cell cytoplasm. So, ito na yung number 3. So, pinakawalan niya si RNA na daladala niya. So, what happened? Our ribosomes, masasama niya itong RNA na to sa transcription, sa translation, at sa pagpaproduce ng proteins. Okay? Which is step 4. It is the synthesis, replication, and protein production. So, under the control of vi viral genes, the cell synthesizes the basic components of new viruses, RNA molecules, capsomers, and the spikes. So, nagproduce siya dahil yon akala ni ribosome na it is a protein that is good for the cell nagreplicate din siya into parts ng coronavirus so nagkaroon ng production ng new spikes new capsomers and the new RNA and the number 5 is the assembly assembly viral spike proteins are inserted into the cell membrane for the viral envelope nucleocapsid is formed from RNA and capsomers. So, ito na siya. Ayan, nag-form na siya ng new uh, coronavirus. And the number 6 will be the release. The envelope virus is bought off, off the membrane, carrying away an envelope with the spikes. This complete virus or virion is ready to infect another cell. So, ginamit nung coronavirus yung mismong cell natin. And, ang nangyayari pa, it's like uh, the bac bacteriophage kasi it's either our cell will die, disrupt because of the enzymes that is being produced by this virus, or our cell will become uh, a place wherein this virus will replicate. Okay, so that is how the coronavirus replicates inside the body or inside the host, its host. So, that's it for uh, the topic. The next topics will be discussed by the assigned presenters. So, see you on Thursday in the GMIT. Thank you very much.